Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, welcome to Christian Education. Uh, this is Bethesda Temple Church of the Loving God, where our pastor is the Honorable Bishop Robert Manley Jr. And our First Lady is Elect Lady Deborah Manley. We say uh, praise the Lord to them and give honor to them and praise the Lord to you. And we give <clears throat> honor to each and every one of you. And thank God uh, that you're tuning in to Christian Education for this week. Uh, our lesson today is uh, entitled Called to Significance, and it's coming from Luke, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 11. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> first read those scriptures in your hearing, and then I'm going to share the lesson as God has blessed me. So Luke 5 and 1 through 11 reads as follows, and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, you have told all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Simon saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished and all that were with him at the drought of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Amen, amen. So <clears throat> as we consider uh, this particular lesson, there are a few things that I'd like to share with you again, as God has blessed me and led me in, a, in this particular lesson. Um, as we come to chapter five of Luke, Jesus has already impacted many lives, healing the sick, casting out devils and delivering many. His fame preceded him. In chapter four of uh, Luke, if you were to read that, you would see that Jesus had been teaching in Capernaum. When it was time for <clears throat> him to leave, the people didn't want him to, but Jesus told them in verses 43 through 44, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. And he preached in the synagogues of Galilee. And that takes us up to chapter five. But you can see prior to <clears throat> Jesus uh, going into uh, this next area, which where he was standing at the Lake of Gennesaret, which is near Capernaum, he uh, had already ministered into so many people um, to the extent that they didn't really want him to leave. They surrounded him and they really wanted <clears throat> him to stay there. A number of other things had happened up until that point, and, and I'll get into some of them, but not all of them, as we focus on this particular chapter. So chapter five begins with people pressing upon Jesus to hear him teach the word of God. The people still pressing upon him, wanting to hear what he has to say, because he spoke uh, of God, from God, the word of God, which is God. At the time he was standing at the lake of Gennesaret, the scripture does not tell exactly decided to get in one, setting up the opportunity to have a specific encounter with Simon because of the two ships that were there, he entered into Simon's. When Jesus asked Simon to thrust out so that he could teach the people, Simon did not hesitate. He did as Jesus indicated. 
he did uh, as Jesus requested. And, you know, some might wonder, well, why did he do it so willingly? And, and perhaps, you know, as I referenced, many things happened in chapter four. So perhaps it was because Simon did have some familiarity with Jesus as Jesus had healed his mother-in-law previously at Capernaum. And you can go and read about Jesus healing Simon's mother-in-law in Luke 4, 36 through 39. However, I wonder how many of us could make ourselves that available to allow God to use us or use our stuff for his glory. Just a question, I want you to think about it. Um, and that question may arise you know, more than once uh, during this lesson as it should each and every day of our lives. Are we available? And, you know, if I had a subtitle for this particular portion of the lesson, that is what it would be, is being available. Are we available unto the Lord? It reminds me of a song uh, that we uh, sing sometimes. Uh, you've probably heard it, Lord, I'm available to you. Well, really think about that because it requires much of us to be available unto the Lord. As we will see uh, later in the lesson, the scriptures bear out that Simon's willingness to be used of God was a setup for a demonstration of God's miraculous power. We must not miss out on these opportunities Je uh, Jesus has for us. Jesus, help me. I don't want to miss out on any opportunity. You know, there's another song. I don't know why these songs are popping up in my mind, uh, but there's another song. Uh, that uh, we sing, uh, said, Lord, uh, use me in this season, or don't forget about me uh, in this season. Whatever season that we're in, whatever season that God has us in, we want to be used of him. We don't want him to forget about us, and definitely we don't want to forget about God and make ourselves available to be used of him. Uh, we know that we're in a really and really perplexing season right now as we continue through the pandemic, as well as so many other things that are going on in the natural world that we live in. But from a pers spiritual perspective, we must attend to the word of God and be uh, listening, uh, attentive to his word and to his voice, not listening to the chatter all around us. Uh, those things are happening. We know they're happening. We are aware of it. But we have to tune in to the spirit. We have to tune in to the word of God. We must make ourselves available during this season because there are so many people who don't know God, who want to know God, who desire to know God, and we must be made available. Lord, don't let me miss out on being used by you, setting me up for miracles in my life. I am available to you. So as we go on to, to verses four through seven, we can see how uh, Simon was set up and his partners were set up to see a miracle. It is important to note here that when Jesus got into Simon's boat, he taught the people and, and uh, Jesus asked him to launch out so that he could teach. So the people, you know, they were swarming around him, but Jesus got in this boat and he wanted to go out a little bit uh, from the shore so that he can continue to teach. Uh, um, that's an interesting setup. So, you know, before we, we when you can read in uh, chapter four, we know that Jesus taught in the synagogues and there are many other places as you go through the gospels, you note that where Jesus taught. But, you know, this is interesting to help us to know that uh, the scripture even tell us that we may, must go to the highways and byways, teaching the word of God. We must spread the word of God whenever, wherever we are. Uh, it doesn't have to be shared just in a church or a synagogue, but we must be ready and willing to spread and share God's word in any environment, any place. So Simon and the other fishermen uh, have been fishing already without success. The scriptures let us know that they were washing their nets as they had toiled all night to catch fish and were not successful. That's when Jesus first got into one of their boats. Uh, they were not at the boat, they were away washing their nets. And later on, we find out uh, one of the reasons why they were washing their nets, you know, bottom line is they were finishing up. They uh, were done 
uh, with their fishing for that day. Uh, some of the better net fishing occurs at night um, during that era, and I'm not a fisherman, so that might be even true uh, today, uh, but, but I don't know a whole lot about fishing, but I did read in some commentary and understand that during that time, uh, many of the fishermen, especially when fishing by nets, they fished at night. Uh, so the scripture bears that out, that they had told all night to catch fish and were not successful. So when Jesus asked Simon to launch out into the deep and let down his nets, I'm sure Simon was confused and probably wondering what is the use. That's one of the reasons why he responded the way he did. Uh, they had already experienced lack of success as they had fished all night <clears throat> without success because Simon told Jesus as much. But then Simon said, before, you know, before he even finished the sentence, right? Uh, this is when our good minds click in. Uh, uh, you know, when, when, when the word of God, you know, boils up in our hearts and, and our faith connects with that word and we can say, nevertheless, nevertheless, at thy word, Lord, nevertheless, wow. Just think about that for a minute. You know, Simon first thought about and considered his circumstances in his experience, what had been happening in the natural with the fishing. Um, he and his partners had not been successful. They had toiled all night uh, with nothing. I mean, not even one fish. But here Jesus is telling him to launch out into the deep and let out the nets again. And it wasn't even the right time to do that. But again, thank God, you know, Simon, you know, uh, had some faith in there, had some reverence for the, uh, for Jesus Christ, uh, had uh, some respect uh, for him as it relates uh, to the spoken word. God spoke a word and it became, it came to pass. And the same thing is exemplified here. Jesus spoke a word. Simon responded to that word with faith by saying, nevertheless, at thy word. And guess what? It produced. You know, regardless of uh, any of our previous experiences, regardless of my previous experience and lack of success in any situation, in any area, regardless of uh, what could or should or would have been, regardless of anything that uh, is negative and, and, and we you know, think that uh, we can't do it, we must be reminded of this passage here and of this situation that is described to us, that is shared with us in the gospel of Luke, where Simon is saying to God, nevertheless, at thy word, Jesus lets us know that we can do all things through him that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. That, that when we have faith, even faith as a mustard seed, mountains can be moved. So regardless of any of our experience, saints of God, people of God, anyone who's listening, you know, if, if, if you don't know God and, and have not even given your life to him, know that his word is powerful, is creative. It will come to pass. And if you have faith in that word, it will produce. So regardless of any of our previous experiences, we can say, Jesus, at thy word, I am going to do what you said. At thy word, God, if you uh, tell me that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, then every plan that I put to paper, every plan that I put to mind that is aligned with your will, Jesus, will come to pass. At thy word, God, I am trusting you. At thy word, God, I believe you can. At thy word, God, I am healed because your word tells me that I am healed. Hallelujah. At thy word, God, I have joy. I have peace. At thy word, God, I have a sound mind. At thy word, God, I have provision. You said in your word, you will supply my every need according to your riches and glory. At thy word, hallelujah. What a transition of faith. There is a time in our lives and that time is now that we must say, nevertheless, God, I believe your word with everything going on in the world, in our country, 
in our lives right now. I dare you to say, nevertheless, God, at your word, whatever is going on in your life, if you've got any situation or circumstance, you're sick in your body, you got an injury, if you have financial difficulties, at thy word, Lord. Jesus said that I came that thy might prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. At thy word, Lord. We cannot listen to or hear to the chatter that is occurring around us, but must hear, trust, and use the powerful and creative word of God. Trust in that Jesus can and will do what it says. The scripture let us know in verse 6, that their act of faith was rewarded with a miraculous catch of fish. They caught so many fish that their nets could not hold them. So many fish that they had to call for help. They had an overabundance of blessings. God will set us up with an overabundance of blessings, saints. God will set us up with an overabundance of blessings if we just believe and trust his word. Amen. So what was Simon's response to this experience? Of course, this demonstration of God, God's miraculous power is a setup for Simon and his partners. The scriptures tell us that when Simon saw what happened, he fell down at Jesus' knees, asking him to depart from him because he was a sinful man. He recognized who he was in the presence of our almighty Lord in the presence of the glory of God, in the presence of Jesus. Not only was he amazed and astonished, but also his partners in the scriptures intentionally lets us know who they were in verse 10, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. They had just seen the manifested power of God and recognized the disparity between them and it. I believe Simon's response was a reverence of God and recognition of his state. And, you know, many times, it should be always, when we are in the presence of God, we should recognize our own state and we should bring forth reverence as he is revealed so that we can get the help that we need as the glory and power and wonder of God is revealed unto us. But Jesus says to Simon, fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Jesus called Simon and his partners, James and John, to minister to the people and to draw them to him. So just as sure as Simon, you know, fell to his knees and, you know, show reverence to, to the Lord and acknowledged his own state, you know, we know Jesus will use any of us in anybody. Uh, he does not have all these preconditions that a lot of us have in order to be used by him. And although, you know, uh, Simon fell to his feet and acknowledged, I'm a sinful man, you know, Lord, get away from me, get depart from me. You should even be in my presence. God did not want Simon to stay in that frame of reference and frame of mind. So he told him to what? Fear not. Don't be fearful. Don't be afraid of your own state. Don't be fearful of those mistakes you made. Don't be fearful of the sin because Jesus, our God, has a remedy. He has a remedy. Uh, children of God, he has a way. And that way, hallelujah, is the truth, the word of God. He has, there is only one way. There is only one way to Jesus Christ. And there's only one way to God, and that is through Jesus Christ. Amen. So we, we should not succumb to our, the condition of our soul or the condition of our mind or the condition of our circumstances uh, in defeat, because with Jesus, amen, we can have victory. But, but please know that we can't have this through ourselves. If, if, uh, Simon had stayed there wallowing in the fact that he was a sinful man and had not done uh, what he did, getting up and saying, yes, Lord, I'm going to follow you. And we'll see that in, in, in another scripture here in a minute. If he had not done that, if he had just laid there and wallowed in his sinful state, amen, then that's just where he would have been. 
And I could hear Jesus saying to us right now, rise up, rise up in me. Yes, we do need to acknowledge sin. We need to repent. That is the way to Christ. Amen. Even those of us who have given our lives to him, we must recognize, amen, and repent when we, we find ourselves in those situations. But we can't stay there. We must rise up and we must hear and know and understand that Jesus is saying to us even today, fear not. Fear not this pandemic. Fear not doing the work and will of the Lord. Fear not anything that the enemy tries to bring to you because greater is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So as they drew in the multitude of fish, they will now draw in multitude of people to Jesus Christ. Their charge was given and they did not resist the charge. In my reading concerning this lesson, uh, I learned that the Greek word for catching used here is zogron, is Z-O-G-R-O-N. You can check that out for yourself if you desire. It is rare in the New Testament, but means to catch alive. Of course, fishing with nets was a matter of catching fish alive but those live fish would soon be dead. Here Jesus calls Simon and his partners to a new vocation of catching people so that they might live, a life-giving vocation of being caught up in God's mission of salvation for all. And that is his mission. For God so loved the world. You all know the scripture well, John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. And that is the call for all of us. That's the call for the world. He loved the world that much. And once we give our lives to Christ, then that is our mission. That is our ministry, is to share that good news with anyone and everyone that we encounter as often as possible. So note in verse 11 that Simon, Peter, James, and John dropped everything and followed Jesus. That word is specific and it is direct and it's intentional. The scripture says that they forsook all. They heeded the call of Jesus. All they knew at the time of committing based on what we know in the scriptures is what they had just experienced with Jesus. And they would become fisher of men. Jesus did not put any prerequisites on the call, but simply for them to follow him. He didn't say, Simon, go uh, clean yourself up and, and uh, uh, get rid of your sin and come follow me. Amen. He didn't, he didn't say, you know, uh, Simon, you need to, you know, make sure you for, forgive and ask for forgiveness before uh, you follow me, meaning, you know, go back to the people, et cetera. Now that forgiveness and, 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 and forgiving other people occurred and will occur for us and continue to occur because God is a forgiving God and he has given us uh, the uh, remedy for our sin. Amen. Uh, that is being baptized in Jesus' name uh, for the remission of our sins, being washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. That is our remedy for sin. And soon enough, Simon would get that. But at that particular time, the call was for him to come and become a fisher of men. They were called as they were. And Jesus called us the same way. Come as you are. Every, every time we enter into the presence of our God, every time we enter into the presence of of the Lord. We need to come as we are. Amen. Every time. And see, you know, yes, when we go to church and we enter into the presence of the Lord, yes, there is especially, you know, true and important. Absolutely. But I'm talking about every time, even in your home, when you come before the Lord for prayer,
prayer, when you come before the Lord to read and meditate on his word, come as you are and allow the Lord to clean your heart, to to uh, wash you and cleanse you with the word of God. Allow Jesus, hallelujah, to apply, hallelujah, his blood to your heart, to your mind, to your soul. Come as you are, amen. Stop pretending, amen, that you are something that you're not. And I believe in my heart that as we press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling, as we continue to seek his face, as we continue to desire to see him face to face, as we continue, hallelujah, to, to uh, let this inner, this outer man die as the inner man increase, we become more and more like Jesus. The, the word lets us know, hallelujah, that, that, this, that hope that is in us purifies us, amen? And we do become more and more like him. But as we continue and as we persist and exist in this flesh, we must come as we are and allow the Lord to help us and to clean us up. So they did not have to get their act together or plan and prepare to the call. They just had to receive it. And I say to you today, the call uh, for each and every one of us, the call uh, may be for your salvation. The call may be for a work that God has for you to do. The call may be for something that you need to get rid of in your life. The call may be uh, some, some uh, things that God wants you to do to become closer to him. Whatever that call is, know that you come as you are and allow Jesus, hallelujah, to do the rest. Can we hear and receive the call of God in our lives today? What had or is God calling us to do? What is he calling you to do? Will we accept or will we make excuses to why we can't or how unprepared we are to do what God has called us to do? These are questions even I ask and need to answer. Is this an individual uh, affair between you and God, between me and God? But nevertheless, at thy word, Lord, we must adhere and do thy will. Jesus calls ordinary people like Simon, like me, like you, like us to be fishers of men every day. When you decide to become a Christian, a disciple of Christ, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are commissioned to be a fisher of men and women throughout the world. The scripture says in 1 Peter 3.15, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Mark 16, 15 through 16 helps us to know that it, he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is our call saying. Colossians 4 and 6 lets us know that our speech should be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that we may know how we ought to answer every man or every woman. Romans 1 16 says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Speak in the word being prepared, knowing what we are called to do. That is what these scriptures are supporting and encouraging us. Matthew 5, 16 says, let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. In Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says, Jesus came and spake unto them saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen. But ye shall receive power, Acts 1 and 8, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. I read those scriptures simply to encourage us to be prepared for the call and to understand what our purpose is, first and foremost, uh, in the earth, and that is to share the good news, to share the gospel 
And just remember that Jesus is, is available. He is there. He is ready. He is willing. His word, hallelujah, has already done the work. And we can be fishers of men, just like Simon and his partners, right? Uh, but we can also be ready for the call of God, whatever that call might be. And it is an individual walk with Christ. Amen. God bless you. Be with you now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, praise God.